Hello Tide fans and welcome to Tide Talk. I'm your host Sean Taylor and I am super excited about this show and I'm even more excited about spending the entire season with you discussing the Alabama Crimson Tide. Each week me and a special guest will be right here at 8 p.m. on Thursdays channel 7 and 207 breaking down the previous week's game and taking an in-depth look into the upcoming game. Let me pause for a minute and say a special thank you to our season sponsor, Mr. Bob English with State Farm Insurance. All right, buckle up, Tide fans. It's going to be an exciting year for some Alabama football. Hello everybody, welcome to Tide Talk. I'm Sean Taylor, your host, and I'm here with a good friend of mine, Chris Blackshear. How you doing, Mr. Blackshear? Good, man. I'm, I'm just laughing that we're actually sitting here um, on TV Isn't together. That crazy? And I'm still trying to figure out, I was like, hey, how'd they get you how to... Did, how did they get me on what, the show? What was the negotiating process of this? Listen, man, I had to pay them a lot of money. That, that's what I came up with. I, that makes sense. Well, look, man, we, we're, we're going to have a great time talking about Alabama football. I, I, you know, here's the thing, especially in this area, and I've lived here all my life, when we won the national championship in January, I was ready for Alabama football to start again. And I know a lot of folks were already talking about what's going to happen next year. And I don't know if you feel the same way, but I don't watch Major League Baseball and I don't watch NFL. I was ready for some Alabama football right after the national championship game. Well, I think a lot of people probably wanted to catch their breath <laughs> right after the national championship right? game. Yeah, it's, it's funny because I was at the game and I was in the end zone um, the unfortunate that we missed the, the field goal. Alabama missed the field goal <laughs> there right. in the regulation. And I, I never forget, I had my cell phone. I was like, you know, this would be a pretty cool moment to capture if they make it. And you realize how off he really was with his kick when you look at my cell phone video. It was like two seconds after the snap. I just turned yeah. it off. But it, what a great game. What a great season. I mean, first off, even with Alabama winning the national championship again, you really got to tip your hat to what Kirby Smart's done. No doubt at the about University it. of Georgia. I mean, it's it's one of those coaches that truly stayed for ten plus years under Nick Saban. You watch him. I mean, he's a clone he, he, of he Nick Saban. He is a a miniature Nick Saban. It is. It is. I mean, that's what a lot of folks talk about, Chris. You know, when Georgia hired Kirby Smart, you know, everybody from Alabama, of course, was happy for Kirby Smart, um, but the Georgia folks were excited because they were getting an Alab an Alabama guy. They were, and I think the thing, and I know this is. Alabama show, but to really kind of follow back up on that because Kirby kind of is a part of the process right. in the system. That's right. Is this year and into the 2019 and 2020 season, the challenges for Kirby and that program, in my opinion, are going to grow even more. Because when you get these five stars and you have a recruiting class like they had after the 16 season going into 17, it's easy to put the one or two five stars you have on the field. Now you've got a couple more. Now That's they've right. already got five committed for the signing class of 2019. So the next challenge, I think, personally for George and Kirby Smart's going to be is now that I have the, the stables full of five stars, how do I make sure all of these five stars are happy? How do I make sure they all get snaps? How do I make sure they all buy into the process and into the system? And I think that's what set Nick Saban apart from all of the coaches, what he's done. He's had all of this talent for all of these years, yet he's found a way to make them all happy for the most part, buy in for the most part, because they'll tell you at the end of the day, hey, I've got championship rings on my finger. That's what matters at the end of the day, and I'm getting an opportunity to play in the NFL. Well, you talk about the process. I mean, everybody hears the process. Nick Saban in the process. I mean, think about it. Look, it just come out, what, a week or so ago, the, the conversation about Nick Saban and does he cheat and is he the best coach? And, and coaches were saying, you know, he's not the best coach. Granted, he gets five stars, and he has five stars, one, two, and three deep. But at the end of the day, he has to get those five stars to do on, on a daily basis. Not, not once or twice, because let's face it, Alabama comes out ranked number one just about every year. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, he has to get those guys to do on a daily basis what is expected of them from, from the time they're recruited. I agree. And, and, and look. I've been around college football for a long time. I have an opportunity to travel and see a lot. These rankings mean absolutely nothing. And, and in my opinion, yeah, there's good talent, but it's gotten away. The stars are now are away, and no offense to anyone that's involved in all of this, just my opinion again, it's a way for people to have made money off these high school athletes 
and have led into their signing a particular college. Right. Because it's, 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 it's the different programs they go to. And I'm going to give this star and that star. And there are four here and there are five with this agency. At the end of the day, and, and I've been around enough college coaches, and they'll tell you that I don't go off that. I take my film. I grade it. I grade based off what my needs are. Not necessarily. Sure. Once I get my needs, then I'll start looking at my own evaluation process. And I think that's something else that really sets Nick Saban apart. He evaluates them as if he's the general manager of a professional team of what do I need? And at the second part around that, what do I need? It's a business that, approach it is, for him. It is. It is. What do I need? And then it's not necessarily, hey, a two-star may fit my system and my need more than a five-star. But then at the end of the day, these coaches want to see kids in camp these, camps these days. So if you're listening to me, you're a high school athlete, go to a camp. Because these days, college coaches want to know, are you coachable? Do you follow direction? Can you take instruction and discipline? They see talent all day long, That's Sean, right. That's right. on tapes. But how are you as an individual? How are you as a part of the family and that team? How are you? Are you and they call it student athlete for a reason. How are you in the classroom? And you know it, being in education now, too, I don't care how good you are on that football field or on the hardwood or on that baseball diamond. If you don't have the grades, you might, you might as well be sitting in your living room. You're not going to have the opportunity. Well, that went back to what I was saying earlier about, you know, the, the article that came out and them saying that Nick Saban, you know, he's not the best coach because he's always got the best talent. You know, I, I've always said it's easy to coach Barry Bonds. You know, it's easy to coach LeBron James, roll the ball out there and mm -hmm. let him play. I think in Nick Saban's defense, to, to do what he's done on a consistent basis. I mean, when, when you get your guys, it, it's the concept of um, are, would you rather be feared or respected? I mean, when you come to the University of Alabama, the expectation is not just to win 10 games and be happy. If you don't win an SEC and national championship, you failed. And I, and I think what Nick Saban has done, sure, he gets the five stars, and he has a boatload of them. But I think what he's done is convince them to now put their athletic ability with the discipline into the process, and look what, look what it's done for him. Yeah. I want to go back to your LeBron James example then. Let's, <laughs> let's, let's expand on a little bit more. We're going to talk basketball no, for a second. No, okay. Roll the ball out there. It's easy for LeBron James to pick it up. You roll it out there, I've got my starting five is five LeBron James. Who gets it the most? How do you manage Who, that's right. the that's, distribution and that's of the ball? And that's, and that's what I'm saying to give it kind of a, an example of that. that. That's what I think he's so well at. And, and another thing he's done so well at is the amount of coaches that have left that program, not just to leave, left for bigger things. You just, you just look around to right To take now. the head coaching job. The head job. coaching job. Oregon's, Oregon. Florida Atlantic. Tennessee. Tennessee. Georgia. Georgia. That's just a quick four. We just throw out there right now. Not Well, defensive coordinator yeah. at, at Auburn now Yeah. also. So you look at that, he's breeding those guys to be successful, and they're all trying to replicate what they've learned under him. A lot of them haven't been able to do it. Kirby Smart's come the closest. But, again, he's about to have more challenges for him. Do I think he can do it? Yes. Do I think he will? I think Kirby Smart, if anybody can, will be him. Well, here, here's, here's – this is going to lead right into what this show is all about um, because there are a ton of questions out there leading into this season. And, look, I think Nick Saban probably earned his paycheck for, the, for 10 years last year at halftime. I mean, everybody – you know, we were struggling, and, you know, Jalen Hurts is 25-2 and two at the time. And, and, you know, we're not moving the football in this national championship. And he makes the coaching decision of the year, and he puts in Tua. And that's going to lead right into the next segment, Chris, and what this show is all about with respect to Tide Talk. So we're going to take a quick break. Um, we're going to take a break on, spot, on behalf of um, Bob English and Alabama State Farm, and we'll be back soon. So stay tuned. State Farm agent Bob English is here to help protect all the moving parts of your life. With auto, home, life, and financial services, Bob English and his team make it simple to bring together what matters to you. Get to a better state. Call Bob today. All right, welcome back to Tide Talk. Chris, before the break, we were talking about the, the, the decisions that Nick Saban makes and, and 
um, you know, the last national championship game, the halftime decision to put two in. Well, now, as everyone is, is wondering, and this is the biggest question of the offseason, who's going to take the first snap? Is it Tua Tongo Vialu, the, the, the guy that came in and saved the national championship? Or is it Jalen Hurts, who's 26 and 2? And by the way, one of those losses was the national championship game where he scores at the end and gives us a chance. Who takes the first snap? Well, first off, they're going to put under center Saturday night against Louisville the individual that's absolutely earned the chance to start. That's one. Two, both are going to play. Let's just, let's just Without a doubt. There. But I'm going to go back to something, and, and some people watching this, you may even think this yourself, that it's probably oh, it's easy to sit here and say you know, almost eight months later. I don't think the decision was that hard at halftime for Nick Saban. It couldn't – could it get any worse? I mean, even though you're 25-2 and two as a starter, you absolutely – Jalen looked like he was absolutely – Lost. Lost in a deer in headlights in that game. And we had, at times, had seen that in the previous two seasons. The Auburn game. But, yeah, but, but again, it was – was he putting too much pressure on him? So, we'll never know what led to him to doing that. But he wasn't executing the game plan. I mean, in somebody that has won 25 games – has been in a national championship game, I don't think should have been that much pressure. Yeah, you should have pressure a little bit, a little nerves, because you're competitive and it's things like that. But you you weren't somewhere you've never been before. So for Nick Saban, yeah, to make the call, because if it didn't work out, that's when he would hurt all the naysayers and the critics. But there was a fact in that locker room, and you knew it watching on TV or watching in the stand, Sean, if he didn't do something – Alabama wasn't winning that football game. Bottom line, zero percent chance. I, I think there's no question that they had to make a change, without a doubt. I mean, that was the obvious. I think what it what it took was it was it was a gutsy move, in my opinion. I mean, again, yes, the offense struggled, but you go back to saying the same thing. We, we saw Jalen struggle at times throughout the year, mm -hmm. even the previous mm -hmm. year, but we still won. And it's what I've said before, do you have to be really good at quarterback when you're surrounded by the people that you're surrounded with? Your manager. And, 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 let's, and let's take it a step further. You keep wanting to talk about, and it's a big deal. That's the only thing anybody really wants to talk about. To a Jalen, to a Jalen, who's it going to be? Let's go back to that game. Fourth quarter, end of the game. You have freshman running back, <laughs> freshman quarterback, freshman left tackle. Oh, by the way, the freshman wide receiver catches the game-winning touchdown. Ruggs from Robert E. Lee and Montgomery in Central's region catches a touchdown pass. So is it that big of a gutsy call to put Tui in when you already had all these other freshmen that are in out there with him? Because Nick Saban tells you we don't bring people here necessarily to redshirt and to stand on the sideline. We recruit people and bring them here that they can help our program. Day one, they will be on the field. Day one. And we saw that. Five freshmen on the offensive side of the ball only in the fourth quarter and in overtime. Freshmen, two freshmen to win the game. Yeah, everything that you read says, you know, Nick Saban is going to put the person that's won the team. Hmm? He didn't necessarily say, I'm going to put the best quarterback back there. He says the guy that's going to be the quarterback is going to be the guy that's that's progressing, that's working every day. But I think the biggest thing, and, and you know, a lot of folks will be able to relate, folks that have played the game and even some that Hatton, the guy that wins the team, who is it that, that the rest of the team believes in the most and will work the hardest for? I agree. And I think going into the game, um, just to kind of promote it, ABC 8 o'clock Saturday night against Louisville and Camping World Stadium in Orlando, I'm not as concerned about who's going to be under center. I think both can lead Alabama to a victory. My bigger concern is you better flip the script to the defensive side and figure out what's going on in the secondary. And people better look at what Bobby Petrino does from an offensive play calling perspective. Juwan Pass now is going to be the starting quarterback for Louisville Saturday night. That's right. You know, from Carver. But the, for, from an Alabama perspective, Sean, I'm more concerned about secondary, depth in the secondary, oh, and let's not forget now the injury bug that they fought through towards the end of the season. They got them back in yeah. Clemson. Got everybody back, not 100%, but able to play a little bit at the national championship game. Now you're down two already. 
So the quarterback, the running back, I'm not worried about that. I'm worried about the type of pressure they're going to see from a Louisville offense that spreads it out, runs it against an untested secondary. And you heard what Nick Saban said just, just two weeks ago, I think. I mean, he, he made the comment, you know, he was getting asked about um, the, the, the lack of depth at linebacker and, and was he concerned. And he was like, yes, I, I'm concerned. Is that what he said? He, he, it's not exactly okay, what he said. I was just curious. I want to make sure what he said. Gonna quote him or but we, we can't quote what he said. And, and maybe that is true for the camera. Do you really believe that Nick Saban is concerned? Do you really believe that he, he has a legitimate concern about maybe not just that position, but about his defense come Saturday night at 8 o'clock? I do. I do because – at the end of the day, I've got to have bodies. I mean, I have as big a concern one game, week one against Louisville. That's the key. Week eight, week ten. That's the when key. I hit that stretch of LSU, Mississippi State, whoever they're playing that's going to be an automatic win before Auburn, then Auburn. That's when injuries, which completely takes away your depth, adds up. Yeah, I think that's a lot. I think that's what a lot of folks don't recognize. I mean, we're all, I mean, I'm an Alabama fan, and man, like I said, I've been ready for Alabama football since January. Um, what, we, what we don't really take into to account all of the time is we're looking for this coming Saturday night at 8 o'clock against Louisville. But what Nick Saban has to do is look for an entire season, and he has to prepare guys for an entire season, not just for this game. And I think that all goes back into that whole management, um, that, that he does such a good job of just managing the organization. I agree. And, 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 and again, not concerned about the running backs and quarterback. Put out there who you want to. We're going to be successful. <laughs> He'll pull the plug one way or the other, and I think you could be successful. The secondary, the depth of the linebacking core. Oh, now let's flip. What about J.K. Scott? You losing one of the you lost one of the best punters in the, in the nation. Yeah. That's huge. It's the little things that you know. Again, that you, you know, when he's flipping the field, when yeah. you aren't productive offensively, and, and there are a lot of times last year where we saw we we weren't productive, and that's things that people aren't talking about. I've not heard a lot of conversation about special teams for this coming season. You've heard predominantly that the papers and the conversation and, and articles and debates and, and blogs have been Tua or Jalen. I mean, that's, that's over, you know, overwhelmed people. But, but I, at the end of the day, it's what I said to a buddy of mine you know, before about the other day. Would I take a one loss to Auburn to win a national championship? Boy, as an Alabama fan, that loss to Auburn hurts. But I'd take it every year if I could win a national championship. So when we come back from break, we're going to talk some more about um, Nick Saban. We're going to talk about the defense because they are very young uh, in some areas and, and, and un untested, and I think that's critical in the SEC. So we're going to take a break. Uh, we want to thank our sponsor, uh, Bob English and State Farm, and stay tuned. We'll be back with you soon for the last part of Tide Talk. Savings this big come with their own theme music. State Farm agent Bob English in Phoenix City can help you get all the discounts you deserve with a free discount double check. After all, real savings should fold, not jingle. Get to a better state. Call Bob today. All right, welcome back to Tide Talk. So, Chris, let's just jump right in. We, we, we've addressed the offense. We, we, everybody in the country is... is wondering who's going to be the quarterback. Nick Saban came out just two weeks ago and said he had a quarterback, and it was defense, and it was Mac Wilson. Matt Wilson's, you know, Robert E. Lee guy, Jeff Davis guy, if I'm not mistaken, was, was linebacker there in Central's region, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Is that Carver right? Montgomery. But that's exactly right. what I was thinking. Carver Montgomery, that's right. You were in the right city. But, hey, that's, right. that's exactly <laughs> right. I was in the right city. But, but let's talk about Mac Wilson for just mm -hmm. a minute. So, special teams guy. Absolute terror on special teams for the first couple of years. Now it's thrown into that Nick Saban defense, which from what I can gather, what I hear and understand, it's pretty complicated. He's now the signal caller. 
What do you think about that? I think it's good. The one thing Max got to work on the most, though, is is controlling the motions at the point of contact and after the play. Because he got very fortunate in the like national. Like a Reuben Foster guy. Yeah. And, he, and because he got very fortunate in the national championship game that he didn't get a couple critical personal foul calls in the second half. Yeah. Yeah. Um, good point. You know, getting up, pushing down the court. But th those are things from a leader perspective. I can make the play calls, but you got to lead by example, too, in how you play the game. Um, you know, he had a big interception return in the, in the national semifinals against Clemson. Um, he's come a long way. Now, another one that I think – and, and Coach called it. Coach Saban called him out a couple weeks ago by name, Markel Benton, you know, graduate two years ago from Central High School. He said, Markel's got to step up. We need him. He's going to have to play, especially with all the injuries, not especially. to mention he has to quit trying to find the easy way out, is the exact words he said. And Markel – has gotten a lot bigger. He's gotten a lot stronger. He's going to be another one in there in the linebacking corp, too, that is going to have to play because And of he's going to get a chance to play. I mean, you, mm -hmm. we've already talked about the mm -hmm. injuries that, that Alabama has faced already in, mm -hmm. in this offseason and, and some pretty important players. Yeah. I mean, Terrell Lewis is it, it, probably one of the best rushers off the edge that we have. He's out probably for the season. And then, of course, the Allen kid is, is injured. Markel Benton is going to get an opportunity to play, especially with the way we do things at Alabama and defensively. So, so there's going to be a lot of people that are called on that don't have a lot of experience, have that talent, that's that five-star talent, and now we're going to see in big situations, SEC football, what they're all about. And here's what it comes down to, Sean. You really want to play a lot of players, too, to find out what the – the, the ingredients needs to be. Because here's one thing about college football I think a lot of people really don't see either. When you look at the NFL, they get preseason games, five or six of them, probably too many preseason games. But they really get to see all combinations of their players like a puzzle. They almost get to put it together, practice putting right. it together, before That's they right. get to the point where it counts. High school, yeah, you cut up a lot back on high school, but you still have – scrimmages. You can have a jamboree the first game. You get a spring game as well, too, against another opponent. That's right. So you really have an opportunity to put the pieces together. College football, you go straight into camp. You have just a couple weeks in pads in August when it gets here. You've had three, four scrimmages all against yourself. You know what the offense is going to do. You know what the defense is going to do. And all of a sudden, light switch comes on this Thursday night. College football kicks off. Saturday rolls in. All of a sudden, you're playing for somebody across the way that you haven't seen, you don't know what they've been working on all fall and summer long getting ready. Oh, and it counts. And you could lose your national championship week one trying to figure out those pieces of the puzzle. And that, that supports what we've been saying this entire show about the job that Nick Saban does. There isn't an off week for Alabama. They don't get to take a break or a breather or let two or three, you know, the second or third string get a lot of playing time because they could potentially lose a chance for a national championship if they don't come out every week and do the things that they're supposed to do. I agree, and I think the biggest thing for Alabama, you're everybody that plays Alabama, Louisville, Saturday night, bring their A game. That's their national championship. Bring their A game. I mean, Arkansas State, week two, that's their national championship. So Alabama is not playing. 13 regular season games or 13 counting the SEC championship and 14 or 15, whatever it takes to get there now, to the national championship game to say I'm in the national championship. You're right. If they don't bring their best every week, the likelihood of them getting beat percentage-wise goes up. We saw that at Mississippi State last year. It's what I was – I was reading uh, something that Bobby Petrino said, and it supports what you were just talking about. They're tired of playing themselves. They're tired of practicing against themselves. Mm -hmm. So they're anticipating and they're ready for the University of Alabama. It's funny, everybody posts and shows the signs, we want Bama. I'm not sure that everybody wants Bama. But Bobby Petrino is saying, you know what, we're ready for Alabama. We've, we've had them on the schedule. We've been practicing against ourselves. We're tired of doing that. Now we're, we're ready I, for the game. I agree. And, it, and if I'm a coach and they – Power Five Conference and have an opportunity to play Alabama. I won on week one. I got nine months to prepare for you. There shouldn't be a tendency that I don't know from the personnel they have. Now, one thing that may give some wrinkles for Alabama this year that you're having to prepare for more than ever, you had more coaching turnover, turnover yeah. than you had That's any exactly other right. year under Nick Saban, which brings new ideas, new thoughts. So you're going to have to have some wrinkles in there. But if I'm Bobby Petrino, I mean, what did he say the other day? I don't think he went all the way in like some people are trying to throw it out there saying, Sean, of, he guaranteed a victory. We're going to beat Alabama. No, he said, 
no, we're going to Orlando with the mindset that we will win the football game. And you should. I mean, Chris, what Division I coach is going to prepare his kids to say, hey, man, we're, we're going to go play Alabama, just try your best? I mean, it, it, it's not going to happen. I mean, and, you know, kind of a tongue in cheek, but I mean, if you're Bobby Petrino, I mean, several years ago, you were upside down in a ditch on a motorcycle <laughs> on the side of the road. You probably never thought you'd have a chance to play, to Alabama. play Alabama and beat the defending national champs. That's I mean, right. you talk about having other, that would be my message. Hey, guys, look at me. I've had the opportunity to bounce back. I've been at the lowest of lows. I don't want to lose this opportunity. This is big for me. It should be big for you as well. I, here's something that I've always been concerned about. I, I kind of like the fact that Louisville, I guess, what, three weeks ago, Louisville's wide receivers, you know, gave us a little bit of locker room, you know, um, poster, so to speak. They, you know, they made the comment that, that Alabama didn't have one defensive back that could cover their receivers. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I know Bobby Petrino's probably chewing this kid out at the time because you don't need to give Alabama mm -hmm. motivation. But it's what I've always said. How do our guys, how do our kids every week – Come prepared to play, knowing that they're going to get that opponent's A game because we got a we got a bullseye on our back, and and things like that help. But our guys still have to do exactly what Nick Saban talks about all the time, and that's execute. Yeah, and I think when you look at it too, and Nick Saban will tell you. I, I look back, I think the 2010 team probably, unfortunately, experienced it the most of not really buying in and listening. And look what happened, and you know when they lost three games that year. It clicked, unfortunately, it clicked in the Michigan State. That's in, right. In, in, the bowl, in, the in, in the bowl game, it clicked. But these other guys have been there long enough now, I think they finally get it. But, again, you can prepare all you want to. You can put all the X's and O's on the boards you want to. When it kicks off at 8.07 <laughs> Saturday night, you have to do your job as 11 people at a time. you you got to check the guy next to you, but you have a responsibility on offense. You have an assignment on defense, and it's up to you to execute. The coaching's over at that point. I may have to make some adjustments in the locker room, but the coaching's over. That's you, right. you, you sh there's no excuse for not being prepared when you roll out there at Cappy World Stadium Saturday night. And that's for both teams. It becomes game management. Absolutely. Then. You've already prepared. You've done what you're supposed Hayes to do. Hayes in the barn, as they that's always right. say. That's right. That's right. Well, Chris, I'll tell you what. It's going to be a really fun season. I certainly appreciate you coming out. Yeah, Man, thanks for having always, me on. Always a pleasure. Um, we're going to do this every week. I, I, I'm looking forward to this show. I'm looking forward to having conversation about like this, about the Alabama Crimson Tide and what the expectation is. We'll, we'll review um, the Alabama-Louisville game, and then we'll talk about the second half of the next show. We'll talk about uh, the, the game against Arkansas State. That'll be coming up against the Sun Belt team, a Sun Belt conference team. So, F Tide fans, I hope that you're as excited about this season as I am. There's a lot of stuff going on. We'll find out come Saturday night who's going to take the first snap. We'll find out if Saban is really concerned or not. And I look forward to talking to you next week. And uh, thank you for joining us on Tide Talk. <laughs>